Are we going to obey His rules? Are we going to obey His commands? Or are we going to fall short and we're going to go after the dunya things? So, uh, you can think about it like this. We all are going to fall in love with something at one point. It's human nature. It's either we're going to fall in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what He has ordained us to do, and we're going to love obeying Him, and we're going to love doing good deeds, and we're going to love being nice to our parents, and we're going to love being nice to each other. Or on the other side, you're going to fall in love with something else. You're going to fall in love with the worldly thing. You're going to fall in love with listening to music. You're going to fall in love with, uh, you know, chatting to people you're not supposed to be chatting with or watching what you're not supposed to be watching. So there's always going to be some sort of attraction. It's part of our nefs, our human nature. We're always going to be attracted to something. To we're going to be wanting to do something. And it's either going to be pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or it's not going to be pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, and by the way, when I say pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I don't mean just all the time reading the Quran and, or make it to speak up or praying salawat. Those are not the only things that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, being a good person, having good character, things that we've talked about in the past, those are the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like those are actually acts of worship. You're actually doing an act of worship every time you be nice to somebody. Every time you go on the street and you pick something up so it doesn't harm, harm it doesn't cause harm to somebody. Things like that are good acts of worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, And seek with that which Allah has given you uh, in the realm of the hereafter, and do not neglect your portion in this life, like what we just talked about. So our objective, our intention, is to seek the afir. You know, we want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because guess what He told us? He told us, in this test, in this life that only that lasts merely years, tens of years, test, I'm going to test you. If you succeed in this simple test of just obeying me, then I'm going to give you an eternity, an eternity of pleasure, an eternity of, of not having to use the bathroom, just imagine, subhanAllah, an eternity of just sitting down and play, uh, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's something that we all we shouldn't want to miss. And of course we can't forget about the loneliness of this world, something we should all, always keep in mind. So the good rule of thumb is, Whenever you're, when you, you have something approaching to you that it's going to take you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's going to pull you into this dunya, just always remember that this, this life is low. It's low compared to the life of the Afghan. It's something you should always keep in mind. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, This has been made beautiful to people, the love of desire. The desires of such as women, sons, piled up heads of gold and silver, branded horses, cattle, and land. That is the provision of this life. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the place of, of the, the best place of return. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells us, yeah, you know, in this life they have gold and silver. You know, I'm gonna I'm bring it to today's times. You have the cars that you want, you'd have the house that you want to buy, you'd have the computers or the cell phones or whatever that you want. You have all that. And it could be good, it could be nice and dandy. You could be getting your Ferrari, you could be getting your Lamborghini, it could be nice. But at the same time, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, his returning to him is the best reward that anyone can get. No matter what kind of pleasure you think you're going to be getting in this dunya, this sort of pleasure that only lasts, does not last forever, it comes and goes. Whereas with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you get that gift, it's a pleasure that will never go away. So, uh, one of the things that the Prophet said that he, uh, he, was, he feared, he feared of the, of the ummah was the wealth and riches that would come in the times after, after he passed away. Because he knew that after he passed away, there were going to be times when the people, when Muslim women would have a lot of money, they would have a lot of riches. And he feared that more than he feared poverty. Uh, and he said, one of the things, he said, one of the things for which I fear for you after me is that which will be given to you from the flowers of this dunya and its ornaments. So, so he, said, he said, one of the things that I fear is, is the uh, amount of ornaments and the amount of treasures and wealth that's going to be given to the Muslim women. Why? Because we're going to be so focused and falling in love with this stuff that we're going to forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our goals are not going to be towards Akhirah. Our focus is not going to be towards Akhirah. Our focus is going to be let me do this so I can get this right now. I want to have this, I want to have this much money. I want to have this car. I want to have this house. So we forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We forget the fact that this dunya is low. Remember what I said earlier. 
This dunya is low compared to the akhir. It's not worth it. It's not worth trying to become a billionaire so that you can have fun for a couple of years and that's it, you're gonna fall off anyway. Because in the end what happens is we all die and we all return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anyway. So the one thing we should go and we should keep in mind every day as we go through our lives, morning to night, night to morning, is that this life is not worth the life of the Akhirah. If I were to give you both in one hand, tell you which one to pick, which one would you rather pick? Would you rather pick the Akhirah or would you rather pick the dunya? But I told you, if you pick the dunya, you, you will get it now. And if you pick the Akhirah, you won't get it now, you'll have to wait for it. But you will get it. Which one are you going to pick? So, obviously, if you pick the Akhirah, you know that you're going to have to go through a test. You know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to send you here so He can test you. And he's going to see if you're capable of earning that ultimate reward. Or you pick dunya right away. Okay, you'll get your pleasures right now. You'll get the big house you want. you get the fancy car you want. But just know this, that one day it's all going to come to an end. And when you die, all that's going to go with you are your deeds to the grave. All that's going to go with you are your deeds. You have your good deeds and you have your bad deeds. And whichever one is more, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make sure that our good deeds are way, 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 way more than our bad deeds. Say Ameen. Ameen. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also to forgive us for all our bad deeds, inshaAllah. So again, it's just something to keep in mind. Dunya is low compared to Akhirah. If I want you to walk away with one phrase tonight, it's that dunya is low compared to Akhirah. What type of sacrifices do you really want to make? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, uh, يَا أَيُّهُ النَّاسُ إِنَّ وَعَدَ اللَّهِ حَقُّ فَلَا تَغُرُ فَلَا تَغُرَنَّكُمْ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا يَغُرُنَّكُمْ بِالْلَّهِ الْحَقُّ O people, the promise of Allah is surely true, so do not let the life of this world deceive you, nor be deceived by the deceiver. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, remember, after is true. It's not like it's going to be a big thing, it's not like it's make-believe, it is true. And do not be deceived by the deceiver. So who's the deceiver? As I'm saying, the shaitan. The shaitan is the deceiver, and the shaitan, rahimahullah, he put a good explanation. He said, Let not the shaitan deceive you. Let not the shaitan deceive you with regard to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying to you, Allah will overlook this for you, and he, will forgive, and he will forgive you because you are a good person, or because of this great mercy upon you. And so you, you, do, not, so you do not longer hesitate in disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, do not think that, oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. He's going to forgive me. I can go do this. I can go do whatever I want. And in the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive me. You know, if you walk your life thinking that all the time, yes, we truly believe that Allah, we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us for our sins. But to go with the intention that I can go in and do whatever I want and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive me is not the way to do so. That's the shaitan deceiving you. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's, he's going to put you through that test. And if you think that you're going to be forgiven by him, well, you may not be. And what's going to happen if you are not? So subhanAllah, it's something else to keep in mind. Do not be deceived by the deceiver, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in, in the Qur'an, وَمَا هَذِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَهْمٌ وَلَعِيمٌ وَإِنَّ الدَّارُ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَاةَ الْحَيَوَانِ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ and the life of this world is nothing but fr frivolity and plain, while the, realm of the while the realm of the hereafter is the true life if they only knew. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that this life is nothing but plain. It's entertaining. That's what this life is made for. And, but the true life, the true life is the hereafter. So subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us countless numbers, countless numbers of time. Do not fall for this dunya. Do not fall for this mere facade, this mere entertainment. Because it's going to end one day, it's going to stop, and then all what you're going to have is your deeds in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the afterlife. So, uh, the, let's see, the Rasulullah he also said, Verily this dunya is cursed, and all that is in it is cursed, except for the remembrance of Allah, and all that goes with it, and a scholar or a student. So subhanAllah, this dunya is cursed. Everything about it is just, it's not good. Except for the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, something to always keep in mind, you know. Again, it goes back to doing the acts of worship. What is an act of worship? It's not just praying and reading Quran. Of course, those are acts of worship. But just being good, having good character. Those are the good things that, are, that exist in this world. And other than that, just don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about all the, 
all those crazy celebrities and the lives that they're living, it's nothing. It's just a mere scene that's going to end one day. So, uh, so the overall, to cap things off, Imam Shafi'i, he said something. Whoever is overcome by the intensity of his desires because of the love of this life, uh, will of necessity become enslaved to its people. And whoever is content by being satisfied with little will find a humiliation lifted from him. So subhanAllah, if, if you're gonna, if, you're, if your whole intention is, to, is, to, is for others to think good of you, and you're gonna try to dress, you know, your intention is to dress nice so others think you're, oh, look how he's looking, or you're gonna try to be rich just so other people can say you're rich, or you're gonna try to do this good, you know, Prefer uh, seems like a good thing, but only to, to get to gain the pleasure of other people, not to gain the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Then that's not the way to go. But if you, you humiliate yourself and you are satisfied with little, so you live in a just an average home, you have your average job, and you just do what you have to do in this dunya, then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, that is the true character, that is the true acts that will that gains Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's pleasure. But when you try to sit there and you go through your life just trying to please, so others can be pleased by you, or just think that you're, you're the man, okay, then you're going to be just under so much pressure to continue it. Once you start, it's going to be hard to finish. And you're, the whole time, you can be living your life just wanting to gain the, the pleasure of other people. You're going to want other people to say good things about you, and it's something that's not going to go away. It's going to be a pressure on you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, you know, take the easy way out. Just obey me. Do what I want you to do, and you're going to be successful in this life and in the next life. So it's it's a you know two way street. You either do this or you do that. Which way do we want to go? So Subhanallah. Of course, this topic of dunya can go on, but you know, especially for a topic for the youth, I just want you guys to realize, you know, as we go through our colleges, as we go through our high schools, we get tested a lot. There's no doubt about it. We get tested a lot, especially living in this type of society under this type of pressures that we get in public schools and public universities. Uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always there and He does not want us to forget Him. And He's not asking for us to do much. He's not asking for us to do much. That's the key thing to remember. This dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us, but He tests us to our limit, as He tells us in the Quran. He puts us, He doesn't put us under a test that we can't handle. So He does, every, everything happens for a reason. And whatever happens, you know, if you're being approached by, uh, by an action or something that you're not supposed to be doing and you have the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, choose which path you want to take. Make your intention right and just remember that dunya, this worldly life, is worth nothing compared to the effort. It's all about the effort. This life is just a test to see where we're going to end up. We're either going to be up here, sitting in the company of Rasulullah and the Sahaba and the other prophets, or we're going to be down there which is an experience that I don't even want to explain because I, you guys, I'm sure, all know how bad it could be. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who on the Day of Judgment and in, in the Akhirah, in the true life, will be successful ones. We're not going to be amongst those who are unsuccessful because we fell for this dunya, we were attracted to things in this dunya. So everyone say Ameen. And inshallah, if there's anyone who would like to add a reflection, they are most welcome to. And if not, we will begin with the, the video, inshallah. Okay, inshallah. Uh, the video is uh, just a four minute video, I think. Um, <coughs> Sheikh Bidad al said he puts it in a very good, very good point. Inshallah, sure.